All right, so checking in on this one. Um, hydrogen ions measure pH in terms of acidity. And so the higher the concentration of hydrogen ions, the lower the pH. You can see that inverse relationship. <clears throat> lower the pH, the stronger the acid. So orange juice has a pH of 3, which might be kind of hard to understand in terms of its strength if you aren't familiar with the scale at all. Neutral pH, meaning like pure water, has a pH of 7. And this typically, the scale, the pH scale ranges from, from 0 to 14. 7 is neutral. Like I said, like pure water. And then acids are on the lower side and bases are on the higher side. And I think people grow up learning about acids being strong and can do damage to things, but bases can just as much. If you have like a base with the pH of 14, 13, it'll tear stuff up just as badly as a strong acid. They're pretty dangerous. What about apple juice? I would guess apple juice is higher than orange juice. Um, it would be an easy thing to look up if you want to. Yeah, will you? I would guess probably apple juice is maybe a four. Okay. Uh, by the way, not that you should do this as a check, but acids taste sour. So that's why things like oranges, uh, lemons, limes, those kind of things. Also candies, like Sour Patch candy, that kind of stuff. The, typically, the, the uh, powder that they use to make it taste that way is citric acid powder, because it's sour. Um, things like hydrochloric acid, you've probably heard of that one, are closer down like to a 2 pH. Will you look that up just what to verify? Percent? Hydrochloric acid. What is the pH of hydrochloric acid? Uh, two to three point five. Yeah. So it kind of gives you a relative idea that orange juice is pretty strong, and similarly, like soda, typically sodas are pretty acidic. Um, also, I think, well, some of it's carbonic acid from the carbonation and the CO two they put in there. Uh, but they do usually, for flavor, put citric acid, I think, in there. So the equation as given is more informative, because pH is something we all understand or somewhat understand and relate to. The hydrogen ion con <coughs> excuse me, concentration is what we're solving for. It's a little less, probably a lot less, understood by most people. But that's okay. So it says, what's the concentration? So we're solving for H. Um, H plus means take the hydrogen um, molecule and make it an ion, right? You guys remember your chemistry from middle school, those of you who haven't taken it? Never mind then. So basically solve this equation. It says for acid rain. So 4.5 is our pH. So we're solving for that whole bracket thing is our variable. So if you don't like it like that, you could make it x and solve for that. How do we undo log so we can get this guy out of here? Yep, so one thing that should tell you is pH is a base 10 scale. Okay, 10 to the 4 and a half. 10 to the 4th is 10,000. And then four and a half is a little bigger. We'll, we'll write that in a second, but I don't feel like writing that number repeatedly. Okay, so with that, those cancel and leave us with one over the hydrogen ion concentration, which isn't what we want. We want just the hydrogen concentration. So what do we do now? How do you get that out of the denominator. Yeah. You could do two things. One, and I, I'm going to suggest this based on what relates to you better. 
So Lily's suggesting let's multiply by that on both sides, which is the mathematical way of doing this. And then those cancel, and now we have our left side, which we need to get rid of 10 to the 4 to 0.5. Okay? So we're going to, I don't want to skip too many steps. Are you good if I just say, hey, this is the left side now, let's divide off 10 to the 4.5? Okay, and that leaves us with our hydrogen ion concentration. And over here, it's um, 1 over 10 to the 4.5. So that's, that's like the purely mathematical way. But it's not entirely wrong to say this. I need to take the reciprocal of the right side, so take the reciprocal of the left side. That's doing the same thing to both sides, and it's essentially doing what we just did. Okay, so similar, if I take the reciprocal of 1 over, right, now this is our variable over 1, and flip the other one. So either way, that's a pretty small number. So 1 divided by 10 to the 4.5. Remember, E tells us which direction to move the decimal point, in this case, left, 5. So this is going to be four zeros and a 3. Notice our units are moles per liter. If you just look at 0 0.00003, it looks pretty small, but a mole of hydrogen ions is an enormous number. Do you guys remember what a mole is? Not the animal? Okay. <clears throat> so a mole just... It's good to have some cross content sometimes. Is a have you heard of Avogadro's number? It's the number of atoms of a substance in a mole. And it's kind of an arbitrary choice and it depend or molecules, depending what you're talking about. Um, it's roughly six times ten to the twenty second. Ten to the twenty second is an enormous number. But we're talking about teeny, 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 tiny little things, right? So a mole of hydrogen ions would be a whole bunch of them. So this is a small fraction of that huge number, essentially. Anyway, now we can skip the next one. Did anybody do this one? Well, if anybody got to it. Yeah, let's do it then. It's the same exact process, only now for orange juice. So that was a pH of 3. So literally... Basically taking this statement and just changing the, the power of 10. Okay, so 10 cubed is 1,000, so this is 0 0.001. Okay. What do you think the strongest acid is? Probably not a name you know, I'm not even sure. I used to know it, I can't remember now. Yeah, look at it. Ask Siri. But don't we have to use Hold on. What is the strongest acid? Let me look at it. Yeah. The second word is based on antimony, which is another element. So fluoro antimony acid. Yep. What is its pH? What is fluoro antimony acid's pH? Yeah, really low. Well. It's okay. Uh, your battery in your car has sulfuric acid in it, um, so don't let it splash on you, it's kind of strong. Um, it says negative. Alright, what was your question? Don't we have 
Are we, what are you asking, peak balances? Yeah, like, they're stuck in each other. What? Like, that's what I'm confused with. We, yeah, we have, like, blood has a pH. Uh -huh. um, sweat would have slightly, we're, we stick around pretty much close to neutral, but it's not perfectly. Like, think of, like, things like tears, you know? They're not perfectly neutral, surprisingly. What about stomach acid? Stomach acid is hydrochloric acid, actually. Isn't that cool that your body can make hydrochloric acid? And so you read a second ago that it was in the two to three and a half. Um, so it's pretty strong. Um, blood. I can't remember the pH of blood, but the, the acid-base system in your body is... Thing important. Like if you get acidotic by hyperventilating too much, or if your um, body's not processing either oxygen right or uh, like food kind of things right, you can get acid. Like you guys know what diabetes is? So that's where you don't process sugar. And so your body. Uh, for a diabetic in the natural state, their blood sugar is way too high because it's in the blood instead of in the cells. Anyway, that can if they keep it too high too long, it can lead to something called diabetic ketoacidosis, which then starts malfunctioning other things. It's a pretty dangerous state. So uh, we, we typically draw arterial blood gases in your wrist to check those things. So yes, they're important. Well, we can, like, drink, what can we not drink with what? Because he drinks through, like, three orange juice. Yeah. So if you drink a bunch of orange juice, you digest something faster. <laughs> Potentially, considering that typical stomach emptying times are pretty short, and even shorter with liquids that pass through, so it might help a little. But I wouldn't use it like a like a digestive aid kind of concept. I thought it was just high in stomach acid. It's low. Oh, I'm low. Yeah. It's but it's acidic. So you guys when you take tums, anybody ever take tums? Those are called what? Ant acid. And so they're basic and so they bind with acid and work to create a more neutral state. What do you think milk is? Is it acidic or basic? It is actually slightly acidic. Really? Surprisingly. Yeah. Even though you kind of think of, hey, I, I ate something hot and spicy, I should drink milk. Not quite the same. Wait. So, with the pH up there, is it safe? Alright, so the first two odds of each section. How many of you did those? As a review of expanding and condensing. Wow, good. That was way better. All right, first one. Remember, this is expanding. And when you look in here, you see three things multiplied in this case. So probably start by uh, breaking those up. So log base 2 of 3 plus log base 2 of x to the fifth plus log base 2 of y cubed. Then we want to pull the exponents out front. And then that's as far as we can go with that. Good? Log base 2 is just a number. So if we were needing to solve this, remember that that would just function like a constant and not a variable. Uh, this one is kind of interesting. First we see uh, to look for products and quotients. This one has another product. What about 21 in this fourth root? What should we do with that? What? Yeah, just make it an exponent instead. So this becomes log base 5 of 21 to the 1 fourth plus log base 5 of y cubed. And then just bring your 1 fourth out front. 
So yet another good use of rational exponents instead of instead of rest. Right, so expanding, how are we doing on it? Condensing, remember we said put any exponents back on to the argument. This I don't think I ever told you this, but the number, what we've been calling the result, is often called the argument of the log, which is kind of weird, but put the exponent back on there as needed. Um, these ones are both perfect squares, so probably our expanded form could have even looked like 2 log 2 and 5 log 5, and then we would put those back on. So it's kind of like having a step done for us already, but in the end this is just log of 4 times 25, or log of 100. Now, what is the log of 100? So what's the log of 100? It's 2, right? What power of 10 gives us 100? All right, this one's sort of similar, only subtraction. So log base 3 of 36 over 4, which is the same as log base 3 of 9, which is what? Book log base 3 of 9. It's 2. What power of 3 gives 9? Uh, I think those last two kind of demonstrate how this how the properties of logs can help us solve too. Okay? So keep it keep that in mind. Also, it's kind of seeming like we need to go back and understand what the log means or what it asks. So we'll probably do that maybe later today. I'm going to give you some time to work. Okay, let's go ahead and check in on 261. Best way to do this one is to rewrite the cube root, the radical, as a rational exponent. And there's a fair bit going on in this one. What is the rational exponent for our cube root? third, yeah. Okay? The reason why that's a nice way to do this is because now you can take that third out front instead of applying it to every piece in there. And then we can start with our parentheses, we can start the whole expansion process. So log base 5 of 3 plus, and let's agree to just do it as we go. So bring the 2 in front of the x. So 2 log base 5 of x, and then minus, we're going to have to mi subtract all the stuff from the denominator. So, maybe do another parentheses or another, or a bracket, and then log base, actually let's break that a step further, 2 log base 5 of 2 plus 3 log base 5 of y plus log base 5 of z, and those, all three of those are being subtracted, so make sure they're in a group. Or, you could just put minus, 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 and not have that second set of parentheses. Either way. Does that help? Okay. Any others that you need to do? 277. Okay. So this time we're condensing these logs. First thing you want to do is bring what's out front <coughs> out, not out, but back as the exponent. So the reverse of the power property. So now we have log of 2x plus 3 squared plus log of x plus 1 to the 1 half. You can leave it like that, the 1 half I mean. But what's the one half also? Square root. 
Yeah. So, and also we need to take note of the, the addition in between, which means these are actually a product. So, log, and if you need parentheses, probably a good idea to do that. Um, I'm going to use two sets, so 2x plus 3 squared, and then in here, times square root of x plus 1. Does that help? Yeah. Any others? Yeah. 269. Okay. All right, so this one... Uh, we don't have any, like for this first, actually for all three, we don't have any exponents, so we don't have to worry about that. Log base 5 is our, our uh, main log. This first one is the only one that's positive, so it's going to go in the numerator. And then we have minus minus, which means both of those must be in the denominator. Okay, You could also think of it as minus those two together. So down there, then we need to say x, y. It's multiplied going back to the original, it, it looks like minus and then minus like where we're dividing again. Um, so it's probably helpful to put those parentheses and just change that to a plus so you can see that it's just multiplied. Does that help? Okay, anything else? Overall, on these 15 or whatever it is problems, give me a fist of five on how it's going. Okay, so doing pretty good. Like I said yesterday or the day before, we'll use this somewhat to help us solve, but also you'll need to be able to do it just this way, where you're not actually solving, just either expanding or condensing. So that's coming. Let's take a look now at this change of base formula, which is a simple thing. It's not a big deal. Go ahead and write this one down. Or not. It's Hopefully, this looks like a super easy one to solve, doesn't it? Yeah. Not bad. Probably. Okay. So here's the thing. Two to the x equals seven. We hopefully we know that if we're gonna solve this, what are we gonna do? To get x by itself. No. Yeah. Guys, this is kind of a little bit stressful that you can't just immediately say log base 2. Okay. So in that case, you would do log base 2 of 2 to the x and log base 2 of 7. And then, of course, log base 2 and 2 to the power cancel. And we're just left with log base 2 of 7. Which you can ballpark. Like, a lot of times you can ballpark these. Like, what power of 2 gives you 7? Well, that would be 2, uh, 3, no, 2.9 or so, right? But the reason I'm saying special, calc special calculator, you can't do this, like, on your phone calculator. Or if you use one of those back there, or just random calculator. So it kind of forces you to, to either use Desmos or a graphing calculator. So, and because of that, it's a little bit slow on your calculator as well. So this whole idea behind change of base allows us to solve always, no matter what kind of calculator we have. So I'll show you, and then we can write the change of base formula in, in our notes. But...
So the question is this. How can we get the x off of the 2, or in other words, out of the exponent, but not use log base 2? Okay? Do you see where I'm going with this? Log base 2 is a special base that you have to have that function where you can choose the base, and not all calculators do that. So instead, we can use either log, just common log, or natural log. It, it actually makes no difference at all. So you pick which one you like better. And then for that, we're going to do, on this side, we're going to do um, sorry, natural log of 7 over natural log of 2 to solve for x. So let me show you that that is the same. Again, I don't know how you feel about this, but for me, it feels kind of slow. So math, and then arrow down to A. If you have a TI-84, uh, I have a couple students who don't. They have a TI-83, and it doesn't have this command. And so they were running into trouble with the graphing that we did the other day. So here I am at log base 2 of 7. And we said it should be roughly 2.9. So 2.8. Okay? That, that was using the calculator special function for random bases. But this time I'm going to just do log of natural log of 7 divided by natural log of 2. Natural log of 7 divided by natural log of 2 to get the same thing. Exactly the same thing. So it allows us to kind of skirt the issue of needing a special base. Because pretty much any scientific calculator, including your phone, has log and natural log. Huh? And then what was your question? I was just asking if they actually did have natural log and log. You found it? Okay. So that process, it's basically using the change of base formula to solve. And if you notice, if we re rewrite this as a log, it would be like natural log or log of base 2 of 7 equals x. Again, just converting from exponential to logarithmic form. And so, I shouldn't have written natural log, sorry. I should have just written log. We're just still in base 2. Uh, in other words, take that statement, log base 2 of 7, and rewrite it with log of the argument over log of the base, and that's the change of base formula. So similar here, what's our base in this next one down? What's our base? Yeah, so log base 3 is a special base. But if, if we just do log this time of 15 over log of 3, that'll give us x. Now, one thing to note, it, when you write it up like this, you can't just go cross off the logs. Uh, I feel like maybe not in this class, but I think some people might struggle with that. We're not rewriting it like this to cancel the log, okay? You cannot do that. That would be doing division before a higher function, so don't do it that way. But the log of 15 divided by log of 3 is the same as log base 3 of 15, okay? I personally, I like this way a lot, and we're going to use it as we get into solving. We're going to use that more. And I, the reason I like it is it's fast. It's so much easier on your calculator to hit natural log or log instead of going through all those menu options. Okay, so let's write down just strictly the, the change of base formula. It's short. And this kind of starting to get us into into solving a little bit.
Yeah, let's stick with our same color scheme. I need to go remind myself what that was. Oh, I went too far back, sorry. There it is. Alright. So, red, purple, and blue. This is just, this is a, not a necessity, I just wanted to keep it that way. Okay? So, log base B. Okay. That's just a log to convert or to use the base change of base formula. I, I don't know why, but I like natural log better. So it's always the result or the argument on top. What we called y when we were doing this. So result or argument on top of base. Okay. And then, if you want, you can also say that the log works as well. Do you guys feel like you have a preference between the, the two, log or natural log? Okay. I don't care which one you use. They both work just fine. I don't know if you want to write this, but you can use for evaluating or solving. Actually, I'm not going to say when. So let's try a few. Everybody got the note there? Alright, so let's try, so it says use the change of base formula to solve each one, and there we go. It says give an exact solution as a logarithm and an approximate solution rounded to the nearest thousands. We're not going to do all three, or all six of these. So, let's just do these ones. Oh, come on. Guys, an exact solution means... Just write it out as a log instead of, um, I don't know. let's go back to this. Do you remember like square root of 20? We could say it is approximately 4.4, but we could also simplify this to square root of 4 times 5, which is 2 root 5, right? Square root of 4. The 2 root 5 was exact. This is approximate. Okay? So that's the idea here. If I wanted to solve 3 to the x equals 4, it's going to be a long decimal that we can either approximate using the calculator 
or leave as a, as a log and keep it exact. Okay? So typically on these, the exact version is like a step ahead of when you finally punch it in your calculator. It's just writing. So I'll do this one. This would be natural log of 11. So x equals natural log of 11 over natural log of 5. That's exactly what it is. Okay? And then approximately is when you go punch that in your calculator and give me a decimal. Okay? Okay. So go ahead and... Yeah, we have time. You can do those in like two minutes. Go ahead and write those out. On the last one, I want you to compare your answer to log base 7 of 10 using the actual special function on your. Alright, first one natural log of 4 over natural log of 3. Second one natural log of 10 over natural log of 8. And then natural log of 100 over natural log of 7. And then I wanted you to compare using the base on your calculator and see which one you like better. So to solve that using the log base, I need to do log base 7 of 100. That's 1,000. And then, or I could do natural log of 100 divided by natural log of 7. To me, that's much faster. What are you guys thinking? Did anybody even try it? You tried it? Which one do you like better? The longer? Okay, change of base version. Anybody else try it? Okay. Log base. Log base, okay. So we're split about even.